Greetings internet, it's Monica and today I am so excited because I am finally coming at you with a video that I've been wanting to film for so so long. Today I'm filming a K-pop reading vlog. So yeah, I've definitely noticed an increase in the amount of K-pop related media in the US, in the West in general, and I've been really excited especially by all of the books that have been coming out, particularly the ones that are by Korean authors, and I just wanted to celebrate that and talk about an honestly to have an excuse to talk about k-pop in a video so that is what i'm going to do today before i dive into my tbr and everything that i want to say about that i do want to give a big thank you to this video sponsor which is green chef so my Green Chef box just arrived and I am so excited. Green Chef is a subscription service that delivers meals right to your door and I love that they have so many different meal plan options so that they, you can pick the perfect one for your lifestyle. Their meal options include keto, paleo, plant-powered, and balanced living, all of which feature hand-picked, high-quality, and organic ingredients. And their meals are seriously delicious, with expert chefs designing their flavorful recipes. The ingredients come pre-measured, prepped, and delivered right to your door, contact-free, saving you time on food prep and cutting down on food waste. Plus, recipes take only about 30 minutes to cook and have easy step-by-step -step instructions. I also love that Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of its carbon emissions and in-box plastic. I got the Plant Power box, and while I'm not fully vegetarian, I do like eating plant-based often, and I've been loving using Green Chef as a way to learn more ways of cooking vegetarian meals. You can click the link below and use my code to get $90 off across four boxes, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply, so just see greenchef.com terms for more details. Take a whole chunk of yeah, why not? <laughs> hmm. Right? <laughs> Usually I don't like chunks of vegetables, but that's good. So thank you again to Green Chef. I will have that link in my description box below in case you guys want to check them out. I'm currently munching on that cauliflower bowl right now, actually, and it is legitimately so so good like i've never tried nutritional yeast before i know which is wild especially because i actually was vegan a couple of years ago but i never tried it and it's so good like it blew my mind but yeah now i'm going to dive into my tbr like i said earlier i really wanted this vlog to be a celebration of the korean voices talking about k-pop i have definitely been frustrated with some of the uh, news that I've seen around some k-pop media particularly around the rebel Wilson film that is I don't know if it's still happening um, but it was basically she like wrote or worked with someone to write a script about a k-pop film and there just like weren't really any Korean people involved until it came to like fixing the script afterwards and I'm just not not really intrigued by that kind of frustrated that that's gonna be like the first big k-pop film that we're gonna get uh so i really wanted to celebrate korean voices in this video so that is what my tbr is made up of the first book that i am excited to read is i'll be the one by lila lee this book follows a korean american protagonist who goes to korea to compete in a k-pop competition and she is like mid-size plus size i'm not 100 sure um which one but i've heard really great things about this one and so many of you have asked me about this one too so i've definitely been intrigued to try it out i am for sure also especially interested to see how the body size stuff is depicted in the book uh just because having the cultural context that i have um yeah i'm just interested and then the other physical book that i will be reading is k-pop confidential by stephen lee this is about another korean american girl who goes into the k-pop trainee program i've never seen the k-pop trainee experience depicted in western media before so i'm really excited honestly for all of this i think it'll just be a really fun time and then the last book i'm planning on picking up is shine by jessica jung i'm going to be doing the audiobook of this one and this if you're unfamiliar with jessica jung she was part of a huge k-pop girl group called girls generation one of my favorite k-pop groups 
probably a lot of people's favorite. Uh, so yeah, she was part of that group and things ended in not the greatest way. There's a lot of history there that you can dive into if you are so interested. I'm not really gonna dive into all of that in this video. Um, but yeah, so she ended up leaving Girls' Generation and recently published this book. It is fiction, but it sounds like it might be a little bit semi-autobiographical, so I'm just interested to see what it's like, um, especially because she's actually been in the industry. So yeah, I'm super excited to see just what she has to say and how she depicts the K-pop industry as a whole. So yes, that is my TBR. I am so excited to just read all of these books. I think the first one I'm gonna start with though is I'll Be The One by Lila Lee. So I'm currently watching True Beauty also. I'll just make this a big Korean vlog, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I'm currently watching True Beauty. And it's so, so good. I'm on episode six right now. And my friend Reagan just started it also. So I'm excited to get her updates. <laughs> She's like fallen deep into the K-drama world. Um, but yeah, it's so fun. I honestly was not expecting to love it. But I just think it's so charming. And yeah it's just so good um so basically it's about this girl who is ugly and so she learns how to do makeup and she transfers schools and like tries to reinvent herself and she like went through a lot of really horrible bullying at her old school so she has a lot of like trauma built up around that and around like showing her true face i was a little bit nervous about what like the overall message of the show is going to be but i'm really liking the direction that it's going in especially when it comes to like her insecurities and all of that so i'm really enjoying it so far definitely having a lot of fun with it um the last korean drama i watched was crash landing on you which was just like a roller coaster of emotion so this is like a very nice uh chill viewing time for me <laughs> okay um so i just started i'll be the one it's a little bit later in the evening um hence why the lighting's <laughs> a little bit bad now but um, I will say that one of my big fears going into this book was that it would really try to overly sugarcoat like the k-pop industry and the fat phobia in like Korean culture and it is not doing that at all. I'm like I don't want to say pleasantly surprised because that's not not what I want to see and want to read but I think had it done that I would have felt I don't know, I think it would have been hard for me to, dis to suspend my disbelief, especially as someone who, like, grew up in that culture and, like, watching also, like, the whole K-pop, K-drama culture and all of that. So it's like, yeah, I think it would have been hard for me to swallow <laughs> if it was just like, oh, ev everything's fine, they don't care. It starts off, like, right out the gate, you're at the competition, um, and it's kind of like the first round, like, if you watch American Idol that first round where you just go on stage and perform and they tell you if you're in or not uh so it, it's like that and so she's at that part and um one of the judges i'm actually i'm gonna just pull it up because it was wild i was like what what did you just say to this girl so one of the judges is in a k-pop girl group and she says to her after her performance Sorry, I'm going to have to say no. It's nothing personal. I'm just being realistic. Letting yourself gain weight like that signifies a lack of discipline. And being a K-pop star requires a lot of discipline and not that extra drumstick at the chicken place. What? Like... <laughs> Obviously, if that's something that you can't read, um, that would be too upsetting for you, 100% understand. Um, but that is like a very normal comment that you would get from some, like if you're Korean, you know, you know, um, that's not the most wild of comments to get. So I was just like, <laughs> okay, this book is, this book is going to go there. And she is plus size. I know earlier I said, I wasn't sure if she was mid size or plus size, but she is plus size. She's a size 16. It states at the beginning. So yeah, I, um, it's cute so far. It's not like my favorite writing that I've ever read in the world, um, but it's a fun why contemporary so far. Um, and I'm really excited for how it's going to explore just like fat phobia in, in Korean culture. Wow, I'm really impressed so far. Um, that's so bright. <laughs> 
so I'm a few more chapters in and we just met our first Korea boo in the book um so that's been interesting uh but yeah I'm still really liking it I am liking it so much more than I thought I was going to I've also been crocheting up a storm um I'm currently working on making a cardigan so working on that and I just have one more square of yellow to accomplish and then I'm gonna go to bed because it's almost midnight and that's my bedtime or it should be normally it isn't but I'm trying to make it my bedtime so it is the next day I am a little bit more than halfway through I'll be the one and I'm still really enjoying it honestly I am floored by how much I'm liking it I went into this super hesitant and honestly put off reading this book for so so long because I was just like I just couldn't imagine that it was actually going to depict what this experience would actually be like but it is and it's doing it so well so far and I'm really loving also like it talks a little bit so two of her friends well she is um she's queer and she also meets these two girls in the competition who she befriends and they're in they're out and they're in a relationship together or out ish uh because in k-pop like you can't actually be out also i did get the competition idea wrong like before i read it it's not a k-pop competition but it's just like a performing competition and then like i guess some people might get signed to a k-pop like group or agency afterwards uh so yeah i'm really liking it so far i'm very happy about that tomorrow is lunar new year korean new year though um which i'm very excited for so we're gonna be having some good korean food <laughs> uh that's really all we do in my family to celebrate but i'm excited nonetheless so yeah my goal today is to complete this book if i can i need to get some more crochet squares done and i need to do some work like actual <laughs> work work so I'll be doing that okay also I have to show you my sweatshirt really quick but it says Karasuno I love it if I don't know if any of you watch Haikyuu but I am obsessed and I love this sweatshirt it's from um, avocado pins on Instagram in case you're interested that's enough you like it ha ah. <laughs> I made another green chef meal, a creamy mushroom penne. It is very, very good. I'm watching some more of True Beauty, working on my cardigan. This is my evening. So I am now on episode 9 of True Beauty and I'm still really loving it. It is such a fun Korean drama so I'm having a ton of fun just watching that. Definitely giving me all of the feelings but I also finished I'll Be The One and I really really liked this book overall. I gave it like 4 stars out of 5. This is one of those instances where I just feel like an own voice as author is the only person who really could have told this story the way it was told with the nuance that it has and I just yeah I, I really loved it I loved the way it depicted just like what it's like to grow up in Korean culture and I really appreciate that it was so honest and how it depicted so much of that um I also really liked the romance I thought it was super cute they had a lot of chemistry and I loved just the way everything wrapped up I would totally love if this book had a sequel but yeah overall I really really enjoyed this one um, I am going to do some more crocheting though tonight and I might start k-pop confidential but we'll see good morning friends so today is Korean New Year which I'm always excited about I'm also excited because the third Lara Jean movie came out today and I'm so excited to watch it but speaking of I just got the most insane package in the mail from Netflix which uh, did I did it make me cry maybe um, so I wanted to share it with you all so first of all I opened the box and this is in it which is if you watched all the boys I love before you know that the like the hat box is really important so I saw the hat box immediately started crying and then inside of the hat box was a 
headband for skincare. Le um, Levain Bakery cookies, which are my favorite cookies in the whole entire world. And then like some skincare from Laneige, which is amazing. Some socks. And then, and then there was this in it, which is, says to all the boys, and it's like pastel tie dye. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. They sent a hoodie. They did not send a hoodie. They sent a whole onesie. I had a good little cry over that because it made my day. I am now putting my Asian American Girl Club stickers on my iPad. And I've just started to all the boys, always and forever. I'm so excited. And also so sad it's over. I literally started the film and had to stop it and restart it <laughs> because I freaked out when I realized that Girls' Generation G is the first song in the film. Like, we love to see it. There's a rice there, you can put them in. We've got some dakuk and kimchi chige and my mom also made mandu and uh, kimbap. <laughs> Sorry, I blanked for a second. So it is Saturday and I have finally started reading K-Pop Confidential by Stephen Lee. Also, I just got out of the shower, obviously. Um, and yeah, I'm really liking this one so far. It is, it really sort of right out the gate really like rushes you through the <laughs> the intro to like get you to Korea with this girl. Um, but I am already finding just like the whole K-pop world and the way that Stephen Lee writes about it to be really interesting. I did just realize while I was in the shower, I was thinking about my reads for this video and I realized that all of these books all are all specifically from like girls perspectives and I would be really fascinated and like there's nothing wrong with that obviously but I would also be really fascinated to read about just like the on the boy side of things like what that's like. This one definitely focused focuses a lot more on like the actual trainee experience and how intense and rough it can be and honestly it put a lot of the last book um, I'll be the one into perspective it just has me thinking a lot about how that book ended and where I think that book would actually end up going so yeah that is what I'm up to today I am also putting together my cardigan I want to show you a little bit of this so this is where we're at with my cardigan I have finished all of my squares for my sleeves. I had already put together the body part, so now I finished putting together this side, these sleeves, so I'm gonna sew this on and try it on, see if I need to make any adjustments, and then I'll do the same thing over here. And yeah, I'm so excited, oh, it's coming together. Oh my gosh, okay, so <laughs> I just finished K-Pop Confidential and Yes, I would definitely recommend this to anyone who is a K-pop fan, especially if you've been wanting something that sort of delves into some of the darker sides of being a K-pop trainee. Like, this does all of that. It's very, very good, um, and it does not back away from any of that stuff. Plot-wise, I don't know 100% how I feel yet. I think I need to, like, marinate <laughs> on it. Um, I really liked it, but also, like, I feel like there needed to be an epilogue or something like I just needed a little bit more I don't know I don't know but uh, but yeah I did have a lot of fun reading this one <laughs> um, I'm still in shock <laughs> at the ending so um, I'm not giving the best thoughts yet so I'll, I'll obviously do a wrap-up of all three books at the end but yeah this one is another one that i i definitely enjoyed this would make such a good movie honestly both books that i've read so far would make such good movies so i don't know <laughs> how i feel just yet but um i'm going to start shine by jessica jung i don't know if i'm going to start it tonight um but i'm definitely going to start it soon i might need to just sit here and think for a bit yeah actually i do have more cohesive thoughts one thing that i did really want to talk about is the relationships with the girls like the girls who are in training together that I think was my favorite part was just watching the different types of relationships that she had with all of those girls um, and just getting to know each of them I really enjoyed that and just like getting to see that dynamic I thought was really interesting really well done um, and again I appreciated that it didn't shy away from any of the like much darker parts of k-pop hi Thank you for helping me crochet. 
We're putting together the last squares. She's watching some Korean drama. <laughs> Hello, so it is like 1 a.m. So I really gotta take my makeup off and go to bed. But I am a few chapters into Shine. I am on chapter six. And I am really liking it so far. I think one of the things that I really notice in this one, so Shine is written by Jessica Jung, who was a member of an actual K-pop group, Girls' Generation. She's actually gone through like the trainee process and everything. And one of the things that I really notice, like the big difference with this book and the other two books is, I just feel like this one has a bit more love for K-pop and gives K-pop a bit more credit as like being, you know, its own art form. And like it still shows like a lot of the toxicity within that industry. It doesn't feel quite as heavy handed. Um, not that I think the depictions in the other books were incorrect, but I think this one, I don't know, it just feels a bit more like in the middle <laughs> for like it's not like super like oh yeah everything's perfect and wonderful but it's also not like everything is like a dystopia you know um and so i really like that that it kind of shows both sides of things and it shows a lot of like the really positive experiences that you can also have because of k-pop and that like k-pop in and of itself is a, is its own art form like i love that our main character rachel is like she's passionate about k-pop like from a young age and like one of the reasons why she's in this whole program why she becomes a trainee is because like she found k-pop as a way to connect with her you know korean heritage and she wanted to find other people who were as passionate about k-pop as she was um and so i really appreciate that just like as a korean person and a fan of k-pop so yeah i've don't want to I'm not saying this like oh the other books weren't good they were still amazing but just like I think because of Jessica Jung's unique experience she's able to give this um this different sort of perspective on the industry that I really am enjoying so yeah but I think I need to stop reading and go to bed so I'm gonna do that and I will continue reading tomorrow which is Sunday I don't really have any plans um Reagan and I are gonna watch True Beauty that's really my only my only plan <laughs> Hello! So it is Sunday, it is Valentine's Day, so I did a little Valentine's Day makeup. I always have to do it a little bit more intense because I was filming it for a reel and sometimes it doesn't, like blush and things don't show up as well, so um, <laughs> I definitely have a little bit of an aggressive blush right now, but I'm really happy with how it came out. I love, I don't use these pearl stickers that I bought like ages ago nearly enough, but they're so fun! Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this and my plan for today is to finish Shine by Jessica Jung. I'm pretty far into it actually and then I also want to finish my cardigan. Oh, just that'll be so exciting for me because I've been working on this thing since the summer. Like when the Harry Styles cardigan trend first started, I bought all of the supplies and I just never finished it, but I'm gonna finish it today and I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> Hello! Okay, so one, I feel like this whole vlog has been filmed from this bed, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's what life is like. So anyways, um, I finished Shine, just finished it actually, and I really enjoyed it overall. I really enjoyed my reading experience of all of these books overall. I kind of feel like I should do maybe a proper wrap up now that I've read all of them and just talk a little bit about each one and sort of what I got out of this experience. Before this, the only K-pop book that I think I had ever really read was the one by Maureen Gu, which I'm totally blanking on the name of right now. But I really enjoyed that one. That one was really fun. Um, but ever since then, I've been interested to just see more of how k-pop is being depicted and discussed in YA. Across all three of the books there was definitely a big discussion around a lot of the negatives within k-pop, you know how controlling the managements can be, how especially as far as like the way that like your physical looks are controlled and dissected. Um, that's one thing I do definitely want to mention though is that if you have any sort of, if, if just, you know, reading about body issues and especially reading very harsh 
criticism criticisms of people's body is possibly triggering for you i would definitely steer away from all three of these books but i think each one had a unique perspective on just the whole k-pop industry you know the first one i'll be the one by lila lee this one um is is just a really good feel good story about a girl overcoming adversity and you know making a new path for herself and you know i don't know if body diversity is something that will see in k-pop anytime soon but we're seeing little glimmers of it you know the girl who is on the cover of this book has opened for k-pop artists and i mean that is a huge step in and of itself and she is making a name for herself as a k-pop dancer online so you know maybe these sort of changes will come to play in k-pop too and i think out of all of the like romantic elements I'll be the one is definitely my favorite it's the one that I just thought was the cutest and um, that I was like the most excited to read about so just want to throw that out there in case that's important for you um, then when it came to k-pop confidential by Stephen Lee this one definitely was so interesting in how it depicted the whole trainee process um, and how incredibly toxic it can be and this is definitely a bit more of a fantasy in some ways like especially in the way that it ends um, and both of these I will say like I really wish that there had been epilogues for both of these books because they I just I need to know I'm like okay but then then what <laughs> what happens um, so you know there's that and then shine by jessica jung which i'll say i almost say i wish had an epilogue but i kind of feel like with the way it ended you kind of know what's gonna happen to that character because you know what happened to jessica jung that one was such a particularly unique experience to read because jessica jung actually was like she went through all of that like she went through the k-pop you know industry and so she has you know that sort of air of authenticity about her story in the fact that like this is her lived experience and I think it's worth reading just for that uh, especially if you are a k-pop fan or you're just interested in learning more um, and I also think it was maybe the most even-handed like it showed a lot of the negatives about the industry and I I wouldn't say that I'm not going to say that like oh it leaves it and it depicts it in a positive way but I feel like even though it shows all the bad parts it also shows a lot of the passion um that you find in the industry too which i appreciated and i definitely think like as someone who is a k-pop fan it also makes me appreciate what so many of the artists that i adore have gone through or continue to go through um and i think that that is really important to keep in mind that like you know these are people at the end of the day and i think so often the media and even fans can really dehumanize the idols these k-pop stars and forget that you know they have lives and dreams and families um and i i think that each of these books was a really important reminder of that especially one thing that i noticed both k-pop confidential and shine touched on was the whole um the whole idea around having a relationship actually i'll be the one also touched on this and basically just like the secrecy that is around like having a relationship within k-pop and the consequences of being outed for having that relationship so in i'll be the one it explores a little bit of that but from a queer perspective and so there are two girls who are in a relationship and they um in the book it talks about how they're out but they're not actually out like they can't be out publicly because they could never have a career in k-pop if if they were um, and I, that's a very very real issue and then you have you know both k-pop confidential and shine the they talk about having these relationships and the fear and these are like hetero relationships but the fear that the artists have to have and the idea of those relationships being discovered especially the women also i did just want to quickly note that each of the books that i read was definitely from like a korean american perspective and i do believe that any real change to the k-pop industry is gonna have to come like from within korea and not from like americans going to korea even if they are korean americans um, i think that that is an important thing to note because i do think that 
American media has this tendency to, you know, create a narrative in which like of basically American saviorism of like going to other countries and like fixing them and I don't want to be part of that message if that makes sense so you know especially if you're a k-pop fan you know how frustrating it's been how you know every time there seems to be a big article about you know your favorite group there's also like a whole section about like how toxic the k-pop industry is when you know the american hollywood and music industry is just as toxic and horrible and deserves just as many um just as many criticisms and yet the american media insists on focusing on that and having that be you know the entire story and that is really frustrating because like you know you don't have to like every time you read an article about Justin Bieber there's not like a side about how like toxic his music label is versus like it seems like every time there's an article about like BTS there's this whole section about like how they're manufactured and all this stuff and it's like no no <laughs> that's not accurate um, and that's not every k-pop group and you know that's also not the entire story so i just want i just wanted to mention that because i think it's important to check your biases and especially like i'm an american i'm korean but yeah i'm an american and so i definitely think i have those biases also um so i just wanted to throw that out there and i would love especially like if there's ever if you guys know of any like books from korea that touches on k-pop let me know because i would love to read some translated fiction about that there's nothing that's been on my radar yet but if there is anything it'll definitely get on my tbr very quickly the only thing i could really think of is if i had your face which doesn't really touch on k-pop at all but it does explore like the beauty standards within korea and how that affects women but i just wanted to mention that because yeah again i don't want to contribute to this idea that k-pop is nothing but like manufactured you know music and toxic culture and horrible when there you know there is a lot of good in k-pop too and there's a lot of amazing people within that industry so yeah i don't know i don't know if i have anything else really important to say other than i just i enjoyed each book for different reasons i didn't dislike any of them i honestly i thought i was going to come on here and be like oh yeah i hated this i hated that and have all of these like really intense criticisms but i don't um my main criticism is that i'm really frustrated that none of these books are the ones that are being adapted into films instead it's like that rebel wilson one which i know i i know i've mentioned in this video before but it does frustrate me because you know that one wasn't written by a korean person it's not being produced by a korean person and rebel wilson is the big star attached to it and i'm sure they'll cast korean people in it but just like to have it from the foundation not be a korean-led project or have korean people involved in the project is really frustrating to me and i know that they did a round of revisions with a korean writer and i'm glad that they at least did that but that's truly the bare minimum and yeah i'm not really looking forward to that and i really wish some of these books one of these books could also get adapted because i think it would be so much more interesting I'm gonna get off my soapbox now so yeah i would love to hear from you all do you listen to k-pop who's your ultimate bias let me know in the comments down below have you read any of the books that i read in this video i'd also love to know your thoughts on all of that and thank you again to green chef for sponsoring this video once again all of that info and how you get a discount off of your subscription will be in my description box below but thank you guys so much for watching and i'll talk to you next time Bye.